Got my legal hustle, welcome to the trap. I can blow a stack, bet I make it back. You can hit my line if you need a track. But we can't even talk if it ain't about the back. What's going on, y'all? It's the kid J. Nolan here. Hey, man, Lola Brooke. She's been killing the game for the past five, six months at least. Viral songs, don't play with it, don't play with it. You know what I'm saying? That's going hard. She got the other one, uh, Here I Go. Y'all already know what I'm talking about if you're watching this video. She's been doing it independently up to this point, but she just signed a deal with Arista Records. She's been weighing the options of different labels. You know, Arista is under the Sony Music umbrella. This isn't going to be a direct deal because she signed through Team 80, which is a production company, multimedia company based in New York. So I'm guessing that that's who she's been with this whole time leading up to this moment. Probably the ones, you know, putting her in the studio, helping her book events, helping her to collaborate with other artists, get music videos done, helping her get on these different platforms. Cause she really blew up being on other people's platforms, doing the in front of the mic freestyles and like stuff like that and being able to perform her songs on these different channels. So they did their part in getting her to this point. Eris the Record CEO, David Massey, uh, he comes out and says that Lola is the rare talent whose presence matches her message. Her music is larger than life, but her vision is just as powerful. We're excited to welcome her to the Eris the Records family. All right, so the building seems to be excited about her, but this is always the pivotal moment in every artist's career to see whether or not they're gonna be able to take that step to the next level to actually make the level label some money and catapult their stardom or if they become another tax write-off for the company. This is always very crucial. Eris, the vice president and co-head of Urban Music says, from the moment I saw and heard Lola Brooke, I knew it was imperative that I sign her. She's an elite rapper and a born performer with an undeniable vision. Lola has an amazing work ethic. Her music is phenomenal and her personality is unmatched. I'm excited for everyone to witness her path to greatness in 2023. Of course, the founder of Team 80 Productions, the, the, the indie label that she was already working with, is happy about this situation as well. Eugene 80 Sim says from the beginning, Lola has stayed true to her artistic integrity and identity that as the world is seeing now is dominating the music culture in rap and beyond since joining the team 80 productions family in 2016 lola has embodied the core principles of our independent label that was established to continue the legacy of hip-hop in its birthplace new york city right so she's been working with team 80 for the better part of five six years they put the work in and it's paying off see this is the difference between her and somebody like an ice spice now i'm not trying to spark up any beef between her and Ice Spice, I've seen some people that have tried to create division between them, like Lola Brooke is who y'all think Ice Spice is. I'm not going there. But what I will say is that what they've been doing with Lola is building her up organically. She hasn't been put in front of the mainstream level too fast to an unsustainable level. Like in Ice Spice, she got so much attention. She got so much notoriety when Drake came through and, you know, said Munch was the hottest song of the time period, you know, that catapulted her into everybody's face. And we haven't really seen a lot of activity to really sustain her in that type of position. She's dropped other songs and people do enjoy those other songs, but she's kind of creating the same thing. You know what I mean? It's all the same. There's not really much to differentiate. I think that she will have some sort of career, but I think that her team is going to have to help her craft out an album or an EP more specifically that's going to get her a broader fan base. That New York drill thing is kind of local. It's kind of regional. There's nothing wrong with making regional music, by the way. If you're trying to be a star, if you want to be seen on an international and national level, you got to be able to make music that people from all regions are going to be able to enjoy in some capacity, which Lola Brooke is having some success with doing. As you can see, she's not doing Brooklyn Drill. She's not doing the Fabio foreign pop smoke type of thing. She's rapping over what could be identified as trap beats, Detroit sounding beats. She's rapping over a wide variety of styles. She can go to any radio station. She could go to Funk Flex like she recently did. She could go to the LA Leakers. She could come down south and do an interview with the Big Facts podcast and stuff like that. And she'll be embraced the same in every different market because she has a universal talent. She's not honing in on just one element of hip hop and she has no knowledge or understanding of anything else. This is what creates longevity. She 
to me, is the artist that New York has been waiting for for at least a decade. Ever since that dip set, G Unit, D Block era ended, New York has been looking a little funny in the light. You feel me? After those eras, New York basically had people like Mano. Uncle Murder, Casanova, which is another extension of an Uncle Murder. So it was kind of like they had these really gritty street artists that had a couple mainstream hits here and there, but they didn't really have nobody with universal appeal. They didn't have the Fabulouses, the Camerons, you know, to carry on that lineage. And they've become legacy acts at this point. 5EO has kind of been carrying, Pop Smoke has been carrying, but of course, with Pop Smoke's Untimely Demise, it's just been on 5EO. He's been doing his thing, but again, his sound is still very regional, you know what I mean? I don't hear people in Atlanta really playing 5 EO like that. It's not really happening. And that's not a shot to him or his talent. It's the sound selection. This is where I think Lola Brooke is able to separate herself. Now, with the label situation like Arista, I'm kind of wondering why she didn't go to another company. Matter of fact, sign with Sony, the parent company, rather than Arista. I don't know if Sony was just going to sign her to an artist deal and maybe they were like, hey, if you want to get a label deal with your team, go to our sister company or our, you know what I mean, our subsidiary company. They'll give you a better deal. Arista ain't been popping in years. Matter of fact, they've been rebuilding. The only artist that I know over on Arista is Mike Posner. Now, Arista had actually folded years ago. They came back into the picture in 2018 when they relaunched. So they're trying to rebuild the label. I understand that. I guess they got some investment from Sony to kind of go out there and hit the market and get some new artists. So I can understand what they're trying to do. Maybe this is kind of like a, a RCA type of situation where they're trying to get some new energy up there. But I really hope that Lola is able to find success with Arista. I hope that they don't slow down her progression. I hope that they don't put her on on the back burner because like I said they really don't have anybody of note you know as far as we're concerned and y'all know what I mean by that this is gonna be an interesting ride I don't know how many albums she agreed to I don't know if she signed a 360 deal it does kind of sound like she might be in a joint venture you know with the whole team 80 thing so there may be a little bit of benefits in that for her on that level as of now there is no update on you know what type of advance she received so we're gonna have to just sit back relax and enjoy the ride man but i just wanted to tell you guys that one of the hottest upcoming artists in the game has indeed signed a deal in the midst of you know this whole independent resurgence that's been going on i would have liked to see her hold out a little bit longer but i'm sure with her she feels like she's been grinding it out for six years independently she's ready for something bigger i understand that and i just hope that it works out for the best let me know what you guys think of this down below in the comments let me know if you feel there's any other company that would have been better suited for a lola brooke type of artist you know it's something that we could just talk about be sure to like and share this video and if this is your first time seeing me on youtube go ahead and hit that subscribe button hit that post notification bell for all updates hey if you're an artist manager, songwriter, producer yourself, and you need some help navigating the industry, be sure to visit realjnolan.com. You can get my book, The Pen Game Portfolio Volume 2, to learn about all the different royalty collections and different things that you could be doing to increase your yearly revenue as an artist or as a music creative. If you want to book a direct consultation with me, that's available as well on realjnolan.com. I'm going to catch you guys later. All right? Much love and respect, y'all. Peace.